If you have read the book of Jeremiah, you will notice that there are many sad messages in it. But it, is it Jeremiah a sad book? Today we're going to study both Jeremiah and Ezekiel. Our guest today is Dr. Gigi Moscala, Dean of the Seventh-day Adventist Theological Seminary at Andrews University. This is Faithful to the Scriptures, and we invite you to take your Bible and also a notebook and join the conversation. Dr. Moscala, we are very glad to have you here again. Well, it's a pleasure for me again to be here. Well, we're going to talk today about two very important prophets, the prophet uh, Jeremiah and the prophet Ezekiel. Mm -hmm. uh, we notice as well that they were contemporary with Daniel. What would be the difference between a prophet like Daniel and a prophet like Jeremiah, for example? Well, it's a good question. Uh, they were living in the same time, yes. um, but uh, they had very powerful um, messages. Um, Daniel was in Babylon, and uh, in Babylonia, not always uh, living in Babylon. And of course, Jeremiah was in Jerusalem. Uh, the, the time when they were living was very um, dramatic, and maybe we can come to that later. But uh, your question is now about uh, the difference between uh, their prophecies. So the you difference know, between Daniel, mm -hmm. Daniel we, we um, classify as an apocalyptic prophecy. Mm -hmm. um, prophecy like Jeremiah or Ezekiel we call classical prophecy. And what is the difference between these two kinds of prophecies? All right, uh, what is the difference? Uh, to simplify it, uh, the, the, you know, several um, different characteristics can be made uh, to, to classify it and to make the difference. The first one is that uh, classical prophecies has short-term prophecies, mm. but uh, apocalyptic prophecies are long-term. In, in other words, um, you know, Jeremiah can speak about prophecy which will be fulfilled within one or two years or, you know, in the near, years. near future within their generation that yes. people can really see and understand yes. what God said. But uh, Daniel, he's uh, giving uh, long-term prophecies which goes really to our time. Yes. Uh, from his time. So it's, uh, uh, you know, going through centuries uh, and he's uh, giving prophecies which um, will go like uh, from his time till we can say to the second coming of Jesus. Mm. So Jeremiah has a prophecy for example 70 years uh, but uh, Daniel has a 2300 years prophecy. That's right, that's right. He, he can speak that uh, you know with the fal false prophet and say within uh, one year, oh yes, we can you, 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 you will die. Yes. And people can uh, see that really this prophecy was fulfilled. Yes. You know, but, uh, so th this is the, the first very important um, difference that classical prophecy uh, really speak about, if sp they speak about future, it's um, only short term future. But um, apocalyptic is a long term for, for and also, you know, uh, Classical prophets will speak more or less about national things. They will have also uh, prophecies um, regarding, in regard to um, the foreign nations. Mm -hmm. But uh, Daniel, an apocalyptic prophecy, it's more international. It's uh, giving bigger perspective. More universal. Um, uh, and this is um, universal, even uh, cosmic, mm -hmm. which, which is there. Uh, uh, second big difference between uh, you know classical and apocalyptic uh, literature is that uh, we can say that um, in uh, the classical the stress is on the word of God. Mm -hmm. Thus says the Lord, and it's very simple. Um, uh, prophet is speaking uh, in the language which. Uh, everybody can understand. Of course, he's using some um, parables and mm -hmm. things like mm -hmm. that, but it's, it's quite simple. But apocalyptic prophet is using uh, visions, uh, images. symbols, images, and these images are 
out of this world. You know, you have, for example, the lion uh, with, with wings, wings okay? yes. or you have the statue uh, uh, which has the different, um, uh, you know, metals. metals. Uh, yes. you, you have uh, the animals which represents uh, state powers, um, and you are like uh, looking at it, like you are looking in the gallery to the image, hmm. and uh, you need to reflect longer. Hmm. It's not only thus says the Lord. And it's a quite plain statement. You need to study them. It's, um, it's now um, you know, in vision, uh, it's um, in dream, uh, with the symbolic language, and you now need to study what is the meaning of different symbols and, uh, and the imagery which is used there. So th this is a big, big difference. A third very big um, you know, contrast between these two is that uh, classical prophecies are usually mm, or can be conditional. Mm -hmm. But uh, the prophecies uh, which are in the apocalyptic literature are unconditional because God knows the future and God is giving this big scenario, mm. big picture of the great controversy, how it will be from the time of the prophet through all different uh, struggles uh, during the centuries till his final victory at the second coming. So th this is a different perspective. Uh, mm. It's. Uh, it's how, how it will be, because God knows how yes. it will be. Uh, here, God knows also, but it's uh, but given in such a way that um, people can make uh, their reaction to what is stated. And because of the reaction, as we talked before, a conditional prophecy uh, depends on the reaction of people. So, so if they repent, uh, if they react differently, if they react correctly, so this doom prophecy, for example, of prophecy or judgment of condemnation will be changed for the judgment of blessing. Yes, or okay. can be delayed or something uh, like that. In, in this way, yes. Now, uh, thank you for this distinction. I think it was important. Let's go to the book of Jeremiah. Okay. What do you think is the main message? Or what is the message of the book of Jeremiah? Well, Jeremiah lived in a very messy time. It was the, the time when uh, was the greatest apostasy among God's people. Hmm. And um, God was always protecting, um, blessing his people, in spite of everything they were doing. God was there hmm. because God, our God is a loving God, caring God. He wants to help. So he was always with his people. But now is the time that after many centuries of rebellion of God's people, God is sending the messenger who is saying, enough is enough. Mm. Now also the curses of the covenants, uh, the covenant be go between God and his people will be fulfilled. Yes. And this prophet is now there in order to bring this message. So He's called by God to bring this very unpopular message. And he's at the very center of what will happening. Because the greatest tragedy will come in 587, 586, when the, uh, not only capital city will be destroyed, but the temple, Solomonic temple will be yes. destroyed. The, the seat of God's presence, mm -hmm. because God was always, always there with them. And suddenly they are losing everything. They are losing capital city, they are losing uh, their um, religious um, center, and the, the temple is destroyed, they are uprooted, mm. uh, they go to the Babylonian captivity, and uh, they are losing their autonomy. Uh, their existence is completely upside down. Uh, so God is sending the prophet, it's like the, the last prophet in Jerusalem. Uh, Ezekiel will be late. Uh, it's contemporary, but he's in Babylon yes. with um, the, you know, the uh, and those who are put uh, into exile with the um, uh, second wave. Uh, so but, but now Jeremiah is there and he need to confront people and he's telling them very plainly. Um, Thus says the Lord, um, repent. This is the, the first message, so repent, come to the Lord. But um, also there is another message which was very unpopular, especially for um, the hierarchy in political spheres. Surrender to Babylonians. Oh, that was a difficult message. This was a difficult, and there were people who were um, using that God's message as a political message, and they were accusing him of um, political treason. 
and uh, he had hard time. And this book is also um, full with psychological reflections. Mm. When prophet is like struggling with this call of God, and it's like saying, God, it's, it's too much. You, uh, you are too forceful to me, you know, like you, you are almost violating me. Mm -hmm. and, and, uh, but at the same time, your word, Lord, is, is like, like a fire within me. I, I cannot restrain it. Mm -hmm. And he speaks uh, and very openly. And um, well, he's an opposition from the king, uh, from the higher officials. People are ridiculing. He's put even into the prison. But God is always somehow protecting his servant. Hard time, terrible time, but he's very faithful. And so uh, Jeremiah has a very unpopular message and at, at an unpopular time. He has a long ministry as well. So he's not a, a prophet, a glorious prophet, probably like mm. Elijah or other prophets That's that did right. a lot of um, miracles. But he has to come with this very unpopular yeah, but very yeah. important message. You no, know, one feature in the, I would say almost all prophets is that even though they are bringing that uh, message of judgment mm -hmm. in the sense of condemnation, yes. uh, that uh, the doom will come, the mm -hmm. calamities will come, tragedies will strike if you will not repent. At the same time, they're also speaking about um, uh, beautiful future, mm -hmm. about renewal, um, uh, about uh, things God is preparing for them if they repent. They will repent. Well, and, and this is uh, that message is if only, you know, if only you will do that. So you will have the peace like, uh, like a river and um, you will have prosperity. You will have, uh, uh, you know, future. Your families will, will, will be great. It's very interesting because Jeremiah himself buys a field while uh, Jerusalem is surrounded by enemies. So yes. he buys a field to, to tell the people, God is going to bring us back. So it is a good thing to, to, to buy this field. Yes, uh, he, he showed them that they can have full trust and confidence in the Lord. If the Lord is saying that Babylonians are coming, but if they will surrender, then actually this act will bring prosperity uh, mm -hmm. to them they cannot um, you know go with that they think that egypt is, is the um, source from where their you know prosperity will come so um, th there is uh, this tension that they don't listen to god's messenger instead of praying for babylon and um, uh, open the gates and working with them they are rebellious they are you know fighting with them and thinking you know, Egypt will come, and they are making this n n alliance uh, with, with Egypt more and more. Mm -hmm. and, um, and God is saying through um, Jeremiah, well, this is in vain. They, they also said, well, we have the temple. And the temple, this is like the visible um, mark that God is with us. So they, they, um, like Jeremiah is saying that people are saying, we have the temple, temple, and temple was like the amulet for them. Mm -hmm. You know, we have the temple, so whatever we will do, nothing is. God will protect and God will bless. And this is complete. So nothing is going to happen with, to us because God's house is here, yeah, so yeah. we are protected. It is like, like some people are thinking, well, I have the cross here, mm -hmm. or my, in the Bible I have, um, in my hand I have the Bible. Nothing can happen to me. This, this is like a talisman, yes. but it's uh, not the, the right yes. way. <laughs> now let's go to the prophet uh, Ezekiel. This is okay. a, a very um, intriguing prophet because of uh, the personal experience of Ezekiel and his message. How would you summarize or uh, introduce us to the message of Ezekiel? I would say that Ezekiel is like the uh, ultimate call of God to God's people to repent that um, this destruction of the temple and um, destruction of the capital city Jerusalem will not occur. Mm. So he is the last one, but he is not in Jerusalem. He is in Babylon. Mm. And his um, message, like the first part of the book, is about God's judgments. Mm. That these judgments are certain. 
there is no more delay. Mm. You know, they were always saying, well, God is here, of course, but um, God is merciful. He yes. is he's God of love. And um, he's saying this or that, but it will never happen. Yes. Because for centuries, God was saying, repent, um, come to me, return to me. And they were not, and um, nothing uh, terrible happened. There were wars here and there, um, calamities here and there, but nothing dramatic. So they were saying, well, delays and delays, and not, have, God is far. We have, for example, the prophet Isaiah, right? He, he was several, uh, many years yes. before these uh, two prophets. And, and uh, Isaiah was also predicting beautiful future. As well. So yeah. they were saying, uh, uh, well, God is not so serious. And Ezekiel is coming, and is very strong language, one of the strongest. Uh, in among the prophets, he's now speaking about God's judgment without delay. And you have the imageries which are later on taken in the apocalyptic books, uh, like especially in Revelation. Uh, uh, Revelation. Uh, and the whole book of Revelation is practically built on the structures um, and, and messages of Ezekiel. And uh, Ezekiel, like a new Moses, uh, is um, is coming with uh, with the message, um, and after the calamity happens, then comes uh, the second part of the book, like from chapter 33 on, and uh, between 25 to 32 are the oracles against the foreign nations. So till 24, it's uh, all what will happen, to, uh, what God is saying, how they had to repent. Uh, that the calamity will not come, the destruction of Jerusalem and the temple. But um, then it comes. Mm -hmm. And from chapter 33 on, there is a change in all whole message of Ezekiel. He is no more speaking about condemnation and the um, you know, terrible uh, judgments of God which will come uh, with pentilence and destruction uh, and, and war and blood and, and death. But he's now like a pastor mm. who is bringing comfort, speaking about um, God's promises, that in spite of everything, God continues to care. God for will give his spirit to, to them. He will be the one who wants to give them a new heart. And he will bring them back from all these countries. And uh, he wants to have um, new people with the new plan for them. Mm. And this is the, the second part of the book. It's glorious how God cares for his people even though they are not faithful. Yes. Now, that, that you mentioned these uh, two sections in the book of, of uh, Ezekiel. In the second section, we have um, Ezekiel talking about a new temple that mm -hmm. is going to be built. Uh, if I remember correctly, chapters 40 to 48. Yes. Uh, was, uh, was God's plan to build a temple in the terms in which mm -hmm. Ezekiel um, uh, describes them? Because he gives a lot of indications of how that, temp how that temple was going to you be know, built. It, in order to understand really what is going on in this last part of, of the book uh, of Ezekiel, and what is the message? You need to see some kind of uh, movement of God, mm. which is presented uh, by Ezekiel from the very beginning. Yes. In chapter one, God is coming from the north, like uh, from the cosmic north, and he's coming uh, uh, in a chariot, with his, right? Um, yes, uh, on, uh, the no, on the throne. He comes chariot, in a chariot. Like, uh, on with the throne. The, um, um, there are these living creatures, yes. uh, cherubims there, and, and so on. It's very, very dramatic, you know, yes. very dramatic, beautiful, uh, you know, I would say even apocalyptic vision mm -hmm. in that classical prophecy. And, and uh, this um, God is coming to, to visit his people. And you see from uh, chapter 1 to 3 and, and then uh, to chapter 8 and 9 that he's actually coming to the temple mm. of God. Why he's coming? In order to judge mm. God's people from the temple. Mm. And, and you, you have that, uh, that uh, you know, movement of God that he's coming to the temple. He's um, uh, going through the very thorough investigation what's going on there. And he see all this um, rebellion, idolatry within the temple uh, area. Uh, so at the end, of uh, this investigation, and you can even see how many months he was there. Mm -hmm. You know, if you put things together, he is leaving. 
And this was actually the last time when God was present in Solomonic Temple. Mm. And um, this is very, you know, sad uh, situation that at the end of, um, you know, chapter 11, 12, he is departing. The glory of God filled the temple for the last time and then departs. And it goes to the east side, like to the Mount of Olives. Yes. And then you can ask, well, where God is going? Mm. And what, do you know what is uh, fantastic? That God is going to be with his people who are unfaithful and he goes with and be with them in Babylon. It's interesting. It, this is, reminds me of what Jesus did. He came to the temple and then uh, this God exiting the temple, abandoning the temple. It, it, it's a sad um, image of Jesus yes, also yes, abandoning yes. the temple. When, when God leaves the temple, there is no more his protection. So mm -hmm. historically, later on comes the Babylonians and can destroy the temple and can destroy God's people because God's presence is no more with them like caring, protecting. Mm -hmm. But still God is caring and protecting, but they have to go through <laughs> eating the consequences of their choices. And, uh, and, and God, at the end now, when really the temple is destroyed and they lost their autonomy, God is in Babylon, with is the telling people. them, well, uh, I have a new future for, for you. And he's speaking about this uh, rebuilding or renewal of, of the temple. And then Ezekiel see in the 40 to 48, and it's not only about temple, but it's about the new territory, which Correct. is there with the new capital city. Mm -hmm which will have a new name, not, no, no more Jerusalem, but the name will be um, God or the, the Lord is there, you know, uh, Adonai Shama, the Lord is there. This is the new name for, for New Jerusalem. But uh, what is very beautiful is that in that last chapter, chapters is also that imagery, it's chapter 43, that God is coming back to his temple mm -hmm. and he will be there, he will be present. So uh, th this is um, like the um, beautiful projection of the future for God's people. But you are asking now, what, what was it uh, with the temple? Was it something which um, it was going could to be, be accomplished yes. by um, God's people at the time? Or um, uh, we know that it was never built. Yeah. This we know for for fact, yes. okay? Um, because the, the new temple which was rebuilt, we call like the second temple or Zerubbabelian temple. Was uh, not based on or that. Or Herodian temple. Yes. Uh, we, was built, uh, you know, under the leadership of Haggai and Zechari Zechariah prophets. Uh, and of course, uh, the, the, pro the prophets were um, encouraging um, leadership mm -hmm. uh, of Zerubbabel and uh, high priest Joshua at the time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But uh, this temple was not built according to the vision of Ezekiel. It was um, um, built on the measurements um, and the vision of Solomonic temple or tabernacle before. Mm -hmm. There are few differences, but the main things are there. But the Ezekiel temple is different. And uh, if you are asking, uh, um, you know, if uh, could be built, I would say yes, it could be built um, uh, by God, mm -hmm. Uh, because uh, of the measurements and things which are there, it's not that um, people had to build it, but it could be built as uh, or given to God's people as a God's gift. Mm. Uh, after they will return from Babylonian exile, but uh, these conditions uh, never had to be met. Were, were fulfilled, because they had to be coming back with the, the whole heart uh, return to the Lord, with repentance, uh, with total submission, total obedience, but they were not. Um, so, uh, so God wanted to give them a special gift. So God they, wanted. They to were not ready for that. They didn't yes, met the uh, the requirements. And you know, th th this temple is described a little bit differently than than others. It's like a a uh, temple with the measurements um, and also with, um, uh, with the territory on which it will come, which can only God can build and prepare. Uh, this um, uh, 
temple is like a ready-made. It's mm. not something which people need to build. There is no command in the book of Ezekiel, mm -hmm. build this temple. It's a command only that um, Ezekiel need to present it. And if people will um, respond rightly, they will need to um, obey the rules, mm -hmm. the um, principles, you know, uh, which goes, the order which goes with the temple. But they, they cannot build it uh, itself. Like, um, uh, to, to give you an example that uh, this is so, when you have description of the temple, it's not a description with the three dimensions. It's only two dimension. Okay. Uh, there is no furniture in the temple. And no description and the, of the furniture. Uh, no description. It's only altar there. Mm. There is no high priest. There is no day of atonement there. Mm. You know, um, and um, uh, like a very clear, uh, you know, statement that it uh, cannot be built by humans. From uh, the temple comes now the uh, new river. Mm, yes. It's a living, living water that gives with, life. With, the, with the new tree of life. Mm -hmm. It is not possible for humans to do something like that. Mm. So if uh, people would react to the message God gave to Ezekiel correctly, and they will really uh, live in that life of repentance every day and this genuine relationship with God and with each other and living for others, not to be self-centered. Uh, so God would do that miracle for them. So in some and sense, Yes. So in some sense, God wanted through this temple that he was going to build and he was going to be, give to his people, begin the restoration of the earth. Because this, this, uh, this river was going to give life where it Yes, it yes. Th this would be like, like the beginning of, of new era. But it will be not a messianic, uh, messianic okay. era. Because, um, you know, in uh, that um, whole passage, 40 to 48, you have no one statement about Messiah. Okay. There is a statement and description of the prince. The prince, And yes. some uh, are, um, you know, thinking, well, this prince, this must be the Messiah. No, it cannot be Messiah for two simple reasons. This um, prince, he has to also sacrifice for his, his sins. Yes, correct. So it's a still time of uh, sin, uh, sinful world, and he is sinful also. He needs to sacrifice for his sins. Yes. And then also you have the statement that this prince has sons. Mm. So he has a family. Yes. And he's not only probably speaking about one prince, but even as time will go, yes. will be several princes, uh, you know. Yes. So, so it's, it's not really building a messianic kingdom. Uh, yes. It's not building God's kingdom on earth. It's what God wanted to give um, God's people as a gift that they can really measure and see what, how He wants to be with His people, how He wants to bless them and give them the beautiful future and beautiful destiny.